Just Incredible here with a Mega Man X3 100% speedrun tutorial on Volt Catfish. This is the most technical, uh, demanding level, in my opinion, in the entire speedrun. Also, depending on whether Bite has already been fought and Blast Hornet will influence a couple of things in this stage. And this is the major stage where neon jumps are very necessary. So at the very start, um, you can just dash forward and use your newly acquired parasitic bomb to take out that enemy. Actually, the parasitic bomb just permanently disables the hitbox, unlike a, a tornado thing, where it would only disable it for just a moment. Now, that lift that I just stepped on goes to Vile, but we don't want to fight Vile in this stage because we are lacking one necessary weapon to get through this stage a lot easier. So, starting over, you don't have to shoot at these uh, crab blasters. And you can actually use dash shots to take out the head gunner. And now you notice it's also a different color. We don't see the red head gunners now because now that we've defeated Blast Hornet, um, those enemies have been uh, reduced to a weaker version. So, starting over, we're just going to dash through the, the laser beams. If you jump sometimes, I don't know what happens. Especially with this one, you can get caught just like that or that one. But usually, if you just dash from the very start and keep moving, that first one won't hit you. I haven't quite figured out why that is. But then you're going to make your way up this wall. And if you climb fast enough, uh, the, these missiles should not hit you. Now, if you were to, if these were red, the, homing, the missiles would home in on you and you'd probably get hit by them. But that's the thing about these red, uh, green head gunners. The missiles don't home in on you. They just go straight forward. So, after that first section and we start climbing... Once you pass the second head gunner climbing up, you want to start preparing for a uh, full charge shot here. And then once you get up to pass this floor level here, you want to go ahead and start dash jumping and the full charge. And, a, and you want to mash out one more shot to take out the crab blaster. Um, the full charge shot will break the crab blaster's cannons, but once it does that, it'll start... If you don't fire another shot, it's going to go completely ballistic and emit a powerful electricity field. So before he does that, the extra shot will kill it. And then from there, you want to dash through. You should be able to dash through this laser without a problem. And then once you dash off of this ledge, you should barely be able to jump in, as soon as you land and clear the, this head gunner. And do the same here and then once you get to this wall a double kick should get you up to the ledge and then you want to um, I charge for I go ahead and start charging um, for double neons way early because my preferred method when I do this part um, I just try to uh, air dash just to get on the ledge and then dash under I don't like to take out this guy some people do but it I tend to get hit more often than not than getting through it without without slowing down and then once we get to the spike as you see this spiked vertical shaft the first really hard part of this stage begins early so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go ahead and get me some health here for a minute because I don't want to die in this Okay, so I'm going to start this beginning section up to the double neons, if I can get started correctly, that is. Parasitic bomb, take him out, cancel, start charging here. I do an air dash there. Double kick, jump, jump, jump. Just dash over just to get on this part, and then I can just dash under him. But see, he shouldn't be walking that far over. So, there. Now that clears it. And now the double neon section begins.
All right, this is the first hard part of the of the first half of the level. Um, just like the beginning of Blast Hornet stage, you have to uh, combine your up dashes and your neon jumps to scale this entire vertical shaft. Luckily, you have a place to land to get your uh, up dash back halfway through. So this is just a repeat of Blast Hornet. So you're just gonna jump on the on the this part of the uh, wall that's grabbable. Do an up dash, release your neon, do a release neon jump, then up dash again. Then you're gonna land here. Then you're gonna jump on the bottom part of this uh, wall. After that, you're gonna up dash and then press neon and then up dash again to get up to the top. Now, when you do the neon jump here, you want to try to hold right over so you can get close to this wall in case you need to kick off of this part of the uh, the wall. And then once you get to the heart, you can just simply walk off the edge here and just air dash over and drop onto the heart tank. But make sure you're holding against the wall when you come out of the uh, pause of this heart tank grab so you don't die. And then just to get back on track, you can just dash jump over to this wall and climb out and then dash down. After getting the heart tank, you want to have a double charge ready because what you're going to do as you proceed forward and you jump down here to this head gunner here, you're going to jump over him and you're going to release the, fir the first neon shot. It starts out slow when it, come when it comes out and then it speeds up, but as you keep moving, it's going to spawn this guy before he uh, starts his uh, attack and the shot will take him out. This gives you plenty of room and if you want you can do a press neon. You can actually neon jump up to this ledge or to this wall which is actually faster but those who aren't comfortable with neons this just takes out the enemy so you can actually come climb onto the wall and then come back over here. So once you get up to here you do one full jump and then another full wall, uh, another full jump will get you to the top here. There's no double kick here unless you do a shallow jump or you don't do a jump very uh, high enough. And then uh, once you get through that part and start climbing up this section, which you can see you can actually do so because it's not spiked line. And this is on the way to the uh, the body armor, and you want to go ahead and charge up for. I would go ahead and charge up for a full two uh, neon shots because you might need both of them if you fail the first one. But let's try to get the heart tank first. There's the first shot. So you're up halfway. Now you're going to do the same thing again. You're going to jump off this, do an up dash, and then press neon. And as you see, I moved over so I can grab a hold of that if need be. So I just walk off and grab it. And then dash jump over and jump. And then I start my double charge. So now when I get to this first head gunner, release, the guy's taken out. Now if you don't want to do a neon shot, if you don't want to do the neon, you can actually do this. Do one shot with a dash jump and takes that guy out. So either of these methods is absolutely fine. It's just whatever you're comfortable with uh, doing. If you want to go for the neons, have at it. So now we're going for the uh, body armor. You can jump to that ledge and it's slightly faster. You get a little bit more height but for those just starting out, we'll just basically climb this wall. And then once you get here, you can, as you say, you just need one successful neon to get up to the body armor. See, all I have to do is grab that and I'm up there. Um, if you can't do neons, there's one backup. You can release your charge gravity, let it go up just a little bit, unpause, and then up dash and you can get up there that way the only time you should really use your charge gravity is for the Hornet fight that's the only time you ever use gravity in this game but if you need to you can use it here so now we're getting the body armor this will be important for the catfish fight later 
So coming out of the capsule, buffer a dash jump, and you can actually fall down that faster. Now, at this point, if you have already fought Bite, you can actually go ahead and, uh, well, in either case, you want to charge your uh, Buster to full. But if you come out of this room and you've already fought Bite, you won't have your charge. But there's two different strats for this very next section. So that is the next part I'm going to cover. Okay. So you, if you have fought Bite from in Blast Hornet, you should have a double charge ready to go here. So what you're going to do is you're going to jump into this wall. At the very peak of your jump, you're going to release the first shot. And then you're going to keep moving forward. And what's going to happen is that spiral shot should take out this crab blaster on the ground. And that paves the way for you to actually do a neon jump with the second shot to get up to, to this wall and get to the right armor. Um, if, you have fought, if you have fought Bite just coming out of this room, you won't have a, sh uh, a charge ready to go. So you'll have to... Um, start charging when you get to this wall and then when you finally get down here you want to mash some shots into them and then just air dash up that way um, and then when you get to this wall if you get to this um, if X is in this position right here where his whole body is between this point and this point and if you do full climbs you need to do a double kick at this point to get all the way to the top if you have to up dash um, you will be actually higher, so you won't need to double kick to get up here. So then you're going to go straight to the armor pod so you can get the sub tank in this stage. So when you get to this robot armor pod, you want to land in the middle of it. So Because if you land on the edge of it, he has to walk to the center before the little menu uh, opens up and you select the default armor. So... I currently have the, the double charge, so we're going to do the double charge, the uh, double charge strat first. Now, for sometimes, if you're like a pixel off, that spiral shot won't kill. I have no idea why. There we go. But I missed the neon, so let's try it again. There we go. And then a double kick gets you up. Now, if you don't have the neon coming out of here, this is the alternate strat. And then just dash up that way. I'll do both of them one more time. Oh, come on, really? And double kick. That's that's with, uh, if you didn't have to fight bite. And now here is the uh, strat. So now we want to land in the middle, and then we uh, select uh, Chimera as the default. So now we're just going to dash over, swap to ice, and then as we fall, we want to fall in the middle of that shaft because we don't want to get hit by the uh, the uh, the spot the sparks. So the armor breaks the floor, and then preferably you want to uh, bust that guy out. Let me, uh, and then take out those. Now, these these should fill up your, uh, full health. So, grabbing the sub tank, you want to grab, uh, grab your refills to fill up your, uh, health. <clears throat> now, here's, this is a very critical part of the entire speedrun that I'm about ready to show. Once you pick up this sub tank, it's time to start filling it up because we have to use a sub tank during the saber rush at the end of the game. So there is some planning that we have to do uh, for the speed run. Now, as you know, frost shield guarantees uh, health drops. So using frost shield, we're going to destroy the crab blasters uh, just by the sub tank. After we destroy this one, we want to start charging up the frost shield because we're going to use it to mow through the rest of these guys to pick up health. And um, 
depending on your previous luck with uh, health drops up to this point, you could fill up your sub tank here. But if not, there's another opportunity to do so in the next stage. So we're going to start charging after we destroy this crab blaster here. We're going to climb up. We're going to release the charge at this. You're going to see on the screen, you're going to see this, this part of the background or this part of the stage. That's when you want to release your shield because it will solidify as you come out of this pit. And then you can kill all of these guys. And their shots will, will get ate up by the shield. So you should have no uh, trouble with uh, navigating. Just be very careful that you don't do an air dash because you will lose your shield if that happens. And you also want to hear the sound the sound effects when you pick up your health because you're going to hear the... If you hear the, the sub-tank full sound, you've got a full tank to use for the Saber Rush. So this is a very important section that you have to do. And also, when you get to this part right here at the very end, you're going to see a laser. It will probably hit you, and then you'll lose your shield. But that's when you should lose your shield anyway when you release the charge from here. Because it's only supposed to last up to this last Crab Blaster. And then as you fall down the pit, or the shaft, you should navigate your way through. And uh, I'll bring up the next slide to continue the fall. And then once you get down here, you just keep moving. But we'll get to that section in just a moment. Also, when you kill this crab blaster, you want to jump just a little bit to see if you get health, like that just so you can pick it up. No, so now we, uh, we release here. Double kick. Do all those little jumps to pick up the health. Okay, so we're going to stop there for a minute. So when you get, this is exactly where I am right here. So you're just going to, now if you have full health still, you can pick this up if you want, but you, you sacrifice about a second in doing so. So from you want to dash over, use your dash speed to get here, do a small little hop to try to cut the corner of this ledge, and then don't touch the wall, but then as you pass the, uh, the ceiling, you can hold uh, back right, and you can actually land here. So you, then you do a full dash. Once you get to the edge here, you do a jump. You're going to bonk off of the ceiling, and then when you land, you're going to jump, and X can barely grab the bottom part of this wall and start scaling. So you're going to do one one wall jump, cross over, do another jump, and then you'll likely have to do a double kick here to get up here. And then you have a couple you have a couple options here. You can just mow through dash shots from Buster to take out this guy and this guy maybe. But what you want to do, you just want to try to sneak in behind it. You want to touch the wall to get an air dash, and then air dash over the last head gunner before the boss. And then you'll just drop down, and then you start charging for a double neon for the boss fight. Um, usually what I do when I land up here, I'll just do a small hop and fire a shot about halfway on the uh, between the, the ceiling and the floor. And that'll take out this guy, and I'll just ignore him, because I'm going to come down and then go behind. You'll see it when I uh, execute it. So let me go back, let me go back up here and get a good running start. Okay, that's good. Dash. Dash, jump, 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 cross, jump, double kick, shot, and then there you go. Alright. Now, not only does the strats getting the uh, heart tank or getting that, uh, getting up to the right armor change if you fought bite, but also the boss fight changes a little bit too. So, before I go into the fight, the first part of the fight is pretty much the same every time. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have my uh, full charge here. Catfish will always leap forward when the fight starts. So at the very beginning, I'm gonna jump forward, release the first neon in midair, 
into Catfish and then quickly come back to the corner because he's going to come forward and land. And when he lands, his iframe should end and I can throw the second shot into him like this. After firing the second Neon, you have to watch his health because uh, 16 is the magic number here for Catfish. If he falls below this health, he's going to go into his desperation move, which means you'll have to break out your drills and finish him off then. You don't use drill at the outset because um, his iframes uh, last a lot longer than using Buster, and the fight is actually slower that way. So once he falls below 16 health, he'll go into this uh, desperation move, but not exactly 16 so you can deal uh, eight full charge shots worth. That includes the two neons because the neons are also considered full charge shots. So you need to count eight full charge shots and then uh, wait for his uh, attack does to get done. And once he begins his ne uh, next uh, revolution or his next iteration of his jumping around and firing, that's when you start damaging him. And then you see what the uh, RNG is to see how much more damage you can take off. Also, you're going to see me take damage intentionally uh, during this catfish fight. This just allows me to get my full charge, and I can fire it into him without his attacks interfering. Um, it's a it's a big deal if uh, if you attempt to fire a charge shot. And you lose because you can actually lose your charge shot if you release the charge while he's in his uh, shock animation, which is really really bad. So you're gonna see me take damage intentionally just so I can get shots off faster. Because with his uh, triad thunders that come on screen, uh, it could be very difficult to get a shot off without um, losing it. So this is the key moment in the fight, and I'll stop when I get there. So I have not used drill yet in this stage, so that will come in handy later. So how it starts. One, two, now start charging. And I'm taking damage on purpose. Okay, I'm going to wait. Okay, that was the key moment. Catfish is below 16 health, and he's he's already jumped to the center, but I can still cut him off with a, uh, with a tornado thing. So he's going to come to the middle of the screen, and he's going to get what I call the jolt. This jolt is very, very crucial to the fight. You do not want him to get this jolt because the jolt gives him resistance to Tornado Fang, his weakness. And um, and here's why: if he gets the jolt, you cannot charging drill is completely pointless, completely pointless, because charge drill will only deal two damage at that point. So then you would just fight him like you would in an any percent fight. You would just shoot numeral drills until his health is gone. Also, when you hit him with the first drill, make sure that he doesn't get the jolt first. Because then, if he gets the jolt, then this, uh, this uh, slide right here is uh, pointless. So when you hit him with the first drill, you want to count how many HP he has left on his meter. Divide that by three, and that's how many charge drills you can deal to him. If there's any leftover health, uh, you just shoot a regular drill into him to finish. Uh, in this particular example that I've got shown here, he has nine health left. So three fully charged drills will finish the fight. Now also, the weapon energy that you have left plays a very crucial part in this fight. If you didn't fight bite at all, then you should be able to hold drill for most for the majority of the of the remainder of the second phase of the fight, and he should die without you running out of energy. Now I'm going to die and start the fight with uh, less drill than by, than expected. 
um, to simulate what would happen if you fought bit or bite in this stage and you have to fight catfish with less drill than, you, than normal. So, I gotta cut him off with a drill before he gets his jolt. Like that. Now, I didn't get to see how many uh, health he had, but I got my charge drill out. He didn't get his jolt. As you see there, I started doing what I would do with a shorter to drill. Okay. I could have killed him with one drill there, but I want to die, and I want to do the fight again with a shortage of drill. But while I'm dying here, I'm going to explain why. Now, in another fight here, I have a shortage of drill, and I just hit him, and I just uh, hit him with a charge drill. Now, the way the drill energy works is that the longer you hold the charge drill, it's going to take off about three units of energy for about every second. So if you were to hold the drill for, if you had like a lot of health, you would probably run out before he died. And that's bad. So in this fight coming up, I'm going to hit him with the drill. As you see, I can't hold charge anymore because I would run out. So what I'm going to do... You just saw me do it in that fight. I'm going to fire a drill into the wall because the drill is going to go off screen and that allows me to hit him with the drill. Now, you only lose energy if the drill is out for a full second. If you stop the charge, you don't lose the energy. So instead of losing three, you would only lose one when you shoot the drill to start the charge again. And then what's going to happen is at this very last frame you see he's dead and I've got the charge drill out in time to kill him and I don't lose any more energy just that one unit of, of energy that I uh, used to shoot the drill to start the charge so there's a little bit of CFO uh, charging here as well so this is what the shorter of the drill as you see I don't have as much drill as I did when I started the fight so watch when I release the drill, and I let go of it. No energy was was used. I'll do it again. See, no energy is used if you don't leave the drill out uh, long enough. Hopefully, I get some good RNG here, but we'll see. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh, I think he got the jolt. No, he didn't, but he had four HP left when I attempted to uh, hit a charge drill. If he has 4 HP, then you just shoot 2 drills, because the charge drill will only deal 3, and you still have to hit him with another one. Now, I'm just going to reset and try to do the whole stage in one felt swoop, just for a show. But there is a lot to think about in this stage, depending on what happened with the bike situation. So at the start, I'm just going to wait and see if I can get through the lasers. Switch to Parasitic Bomb if I get through. Shoot one shot. Start my charge here. Air dash. Double kick here. Well, I didn't quite get up there. Now for the Neons. And I've already started charging for another neon, double neon. So I'm going to release, press neon, two full jumps. And now I'm already charging again for the body armor.
that was a pretty good first half. So in this scenario, I've already fought Bite, so I won't have to worry about him. So I can go ahead and start charging up for a double charge for after the door. But for the jump, uh, dash jump, just ignore those guys. So when we come out of the other side of the door, we're going to try to do the uh, release neon and then use the press neon to get up to the right armor. And I didn't get it, so I'll just air dash for a backup. Land in the middle. Default. I'm going to switch to ice while I'm on the right armor. Disembark. Fall through the middle. And take him out. Start charging. I released that a little early, but I might be alright. Well, maybe not. It's alright. So, keep moving. Jump, 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 cross, jump, double kick. Snipe shot. Tap the wall, air dash over. Prep for full charge. So now we keep track of shots. Eight's the magic number. Also, watch his uh, attack pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, this is good. 11, 12. Now, I held the charge that time for the drill. And I can hold the drill the entire time because I have enough drill energy. And that's the fight. This stage will take a lot of practice and a lot of effort to get through quickly every time. It's, it's not as simple as the other stages in the game. It just isn't.